Hi guys, and we're going to make some cog movement today. And we're going to be driving that with a very simple macro. Which is just controlling one rotation of a single drive gear. And all these gears are linked together to allow us to actually drive this animation in here. Um, this allow, opens up for a larger piece of code to actually drive more of the animation. But we're just going to keep the code simple. Two lines of code in there. We're going to be using a formula to actually link all of the actual drive mechanisms together with a single formula for each one which allows us to determine the ratio of the actual different cogs in a coordination to the actual drive mechanism and we're also going to attach the macro to the actual toolbar so when we click on it we can actually see the actual work cogs go round So let's get started. Let's get rid of my demo, get rid of my macro, and I am going to also remove the little icon for that macro. Remove that. And the toolbars and the part design. Got a custom one there that I can actually now delete. And that's gone. So let's start from the beginning. So I'm on the part design workbench. I'm going to create a new document. Now, the good thing with part design is that we've got an infinite gear which we can use there. And I'm going to set this as the first one as the drive gear. Okay, that. And what I'm going to do is rename that as well that drive gear. Now with the drive gear there's inside the placement there's an angle and whenever we change this angle the angle of the gear changes. We've also got a formula which we'll use for other gears so any other gears that we, we actually create will actually tie it into this gear by using this formula. So what I'm going to do is create another gear part design include gear and this one I'm going to make 20 teeth and I'm going to rename that one I'm just going to call it gear 20 so that's done and we're going to place it somewhere Let's position it off to the left about there. I'm not going to worry about the meshing for the time being, so we're going to leave that as it is. There we go. That's good. So that's done. Now, the angle, if you think about it, if we're driving this gear here, so I'm just going to just offset it so we can actually get it in the correct position. There we go. We'll take this out in a mo. If we're driving this gear here, we're driving it with every rotation around clockwise, we go through 10 teeth. So if we're rotating clockwise 10 teeth, then this meshing gear will also rotate 10 teeth. But this has got 20 teeth, so it'll only go around halfway because it's got double the amount of teeth to the actual gear, it's the driving gear itself. And that's called ratio. So we've got a ratio there. So if we divide one by the other, we get our ratio, which is 0 0.5, which is half. And we can do that by going into our gear that we've added, find our angle. And if we click on the little function icon on the end, or if I come into here and hit equals, we get our formula editor. Now, the good thing about our formula editor is that if we start typing, say, drive gear, we get our drive gear up, we get a dot. If we start 
type in placement, you can see we can actually access the angle, which is the actual angle of that is actually 18. So we could times this by 0.5 to actually get our correct ratio for this. But the easiest thing to do is to times it by the amount of teeth divided in the actual drive gears by the amount of teeth divided in our larger gear. And we can do that, so times drive gear dot number, number of teeth divided by the gear 20. So there it is. Dot let's bring this over. We've got two dots there, that's no good. So dot and then we type in N, we've got number of teeth there. Let's close our bracket. You see it's come up nine. So the angle of this at the moment was 18. So that's come up nine. So that is correct. If we're okay that. And you can see we've got an overlap in low lapping mesh there. Because if I zero my angle out on the drive gear, because I've put an offset on there of 18, and there we go. So if we move this angle now, the other gear will move. Unfortunately, that moved in the wrong direction, I believe. It's hard to tell. And this is where the macro comes in handy. Yeah, it's moving in the wrong direction. So we can actually click on our gear, come into here, and set this to minus, and that'll make it spin in the other direction. So now if I click on my gear and move this, it should be going in the right direction. So they're both going, this one's going anti-clockwise, this one's going clockwise. So this will obviously need a bit of offset to actually mesh it correctly. And found out it was about 18 on this side. So it's gonna be car, probably half of that. So nine on this side, on the gear. Now, what you've got to be careful of, so I come in here, and I click on this, and if I put in here 9, whoops, 9 plus, you can see it's got incompatible units there. And that's because we have to actually include the degree symbol in there, the d degree character. And because I don't know the actual d degree ca character on there, I'm going to go out to the drive and I'm going to copy that a whole value along with the character and actually go to my gear, jump into the formula and right at the beginning I'm going to put that plus and I'm going to change this to 8 and OK that. So let's offset that now. So our formula there was our offset plus the drive gear rotational angle, so the drive gear angle, then we times that by the drive gear that is divided by the gear 20 and what their number of teeth are. So the number of teeth for those two to get a ratio. And that allows us to tie those two together. So now we've done that, we can add more gears. So for instance, if I wanted another gear in here, I can go up to the part design, go to infinite gear, and uh, I set this one to free. Yeah, that's a smaller gear in there. So I'm going to set that one to free. Okay, that. Rename. So that's gear at zero free and give it a bit of placement so I'm going to place this off to the side here this should be arrow keys that'll be quicker uh, I'm just going to rotate it so I can get it in the right position and we'll 
get rid of that in a minute. So let's stick that in there. So that's in position now. So I don't need the angle. I'm just taking a mental note of that what what that was in my head. So I can get go back to that layer. So we do the angle with our formula now. So it's the drive gear dot placement dot angle times and I always like to use a bracket in here. So that's the drive gear. And then if we take away the dot add dot start typing number n for number. If you use a capital in there, it won't come up. So lowercase n number of teeth divided by our gear zero three dot n number of teeth. There we go. Okay, that moment is 53, so that's drive the drive gear. Now, is that going in the right direction? Yeah, that's going in the right direction, but we need to do an offset on that. So, let's gear. Zero the drive gear. Go to gear three. Got an angle there. And what was it before? About thirty six plus. No, oh, I need to get the. There we go. We need that character. Six on there. I don't need those. Make sure our drive gear is zeroed. And what I'm going to do is gear zero three. I'm just going to move that slightly. Position on the Y. And I'm going to bring down this angle. That do me, and I'm just going to modify the position. Don't want to mess with it too much, otherwise, the video would be too long. So that's it. So let's drive the angle. See, that's rotating in the wrong direction, so I'm going to go to drive gear zero three place a minus in there so as you can see I can't really see what's going on there so I've got to really make something that allows me to actually see this without having this wheel turn and then recompute afterwards it makes life a lot easier if we can have something in, in there to actually do that. So let's create a macro. Create a new macro and I'm going to call it. So in here I've got a blank screen so we can actually start to actually create our macro in here and all we want to do is drive this wheel with one click of the macro which we're going to place in this toolbar here. So to do that, we need to bring up our Python console. So view panels, Python console, and I'm just going to clear this console. And what I need is the command to actually move that wheel. So if we click on our drive gear, got angle at the moment, so that's increase this angle. And you can see this freecad unknown document get object, and there's a gear name there and the placement, that's an internal name that's being used. So we copy that. 
Now if we remember back before when we had a look at the, let's click on here and have a look at the angle formula. Got placement dot rotation dot angle. So if I put dot rotation dot angle in here, hit enter, I can see I've got an angle. It's coming up. Now it's not in degrees because it hasn't got a, a degree sign on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that in my macro. So control C that. Let's get rid of that and pop over to my macro which is open here, gear driver, and just dump that command in here. And we've got free cat, get document unnamed, get object, the gear name, placement dot rotation. And I'm going to use plus equals on the end of that. And I'm going to go for something for like, if we look down here, we rotated 0.3 at the moment. So I'm going to use 0.1 and see where that brings me out. We also need to refresh as well. So if I go up to edit, actually, if I make a change in here for the drive gear, change this angle, but not click off, go edit, refresh, I'll get the refresh command. I'll need that as well. Place that in there. So that's our macro. So what will happen is each time we run the macro, we've got unexpected indent and that's because there's an indent there, let's take that off. So each time we run this, no errors, this screen will move. But we can't see it because we're not actually looking at the screen. So we need to solve that and we can do that by assigning the macro to a button. So if I go into tools, customize and look on macros, we can actually select our macro from here. So ours is gear driver and then we can actually pick a pixel map to add it to. So let's pick something interesting. We'll just pick the first one in the list. I'm going to use the Python icon there. And give it a bit of menu text. So gear driver. Click add. So that's there now. So now if we jump over to our toolbars and we select the part design. So in here, if we drop down to macros, not macro, macros, because macros is something different. So drop down to macros, you see the gear driver here. I can't add that at the moment because we'll need a new item in here. So toolbar name, doesn't matter what you call it. So if you look, see the screen how that actually changed. So it's actually added a toolbar in here and we can move that gear into our toolbar. You can see the toolbars there. So close that. And we can actually move this if we so desire into position up here. So now I can actually go onto here and actually click this and see my gears working. So those are all in sync. And now it's a case of just adding these to bodies and padding them up and, and we can actually get our gears looking like gears on the screen rather than flat 2D objects. So add a body, I'm going to actually rename the body. So this is for drive, drive gear. And you can see that's broken and What's happening is 
is that I've renamed it the same name. So gear body. And then we should be alright. There we go. So be wary of that. So don't name them the same, otherwise you can have troubles. So if I move that into there, now we can we're okay. Add a new body in there. We'll call this gear zero three body. Gear zero three can go in there, and a new body for gear twenty body. Gear twenty body can go in there. And double check that everything's still working and then we can go in and do our pads as we want so that will still work now so if you get this this is because you need to make this one toggle active body and then click and pad still working so let's click our drive gear so I'm not going to click that if I try to pad that I get this which I don't want so I can double click that to actually make that active and pad that up and that Are those done so now I click this you can see this is all moving smoothly okay so that's how you link one drive wheel to or one drive gear to a number of other gears by using the formula and having minimum amount of code two lines to actually move those gears with a little button on the actual taskbar there and you can take this to whatever height you want you can actually flip these around if you so desire onto different axes so if I go right click transform I could flip this around to there Okay, that and that will still work like so so that's how to drive a number of gears just by using formulas okay thanks a lot for watching I'll see you next time if you like what you see, and please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site um, where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.